morning and welcome to another episode of Business Beat with me, Odette. Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about technology and how technology affects business, how it affects education, how it's been adopted in every sphere of our lives. A lot of talk about the fourth industrial revolution that is coming, that the internet of things is coming. It's upon us and how we consume content Content being a lot more than just advertising. I'm talking about how you watch TV, how you engage on social media. What are you getting as a consumer and how should you be communicating if you are a business owner? With me today is Spiro Patricios, who is the CEO of The Launch Factory, content creator for the last very long time. Good morning, Spiro, and welcome. Morning, Odette. Thanks for giving away my age. <laughs> <laughs> Spiro content, 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 content. We hear in marketing about content being king. We hear about content being at the heart of everything. But technology, how has this changed the way content is being made? Technology, no doubt, no question of, uh, uh, no question of it. We know that technology has affected everything. Mm -hmm. and, and content has also become part of that. In a good way, in, uh, so, so there's two levels of technology. So if we look at the hardware, phones, DSLRs, Aries, they become a lot more accessible. Mm -hmm. So now people can do content on their phone and a lot more people can enter the market. The question though is, are they creative? Because there's so much content out there, can they put a really good message across to their consumers and can they get an audience? So the first thing is the hardware. <clears throat> the second thing, is the software that sits as a layer on top of that. And that exposes so many people to so much. I'll give an example. And if you're a small business owner, mm -hmm. you can subscribe to a piece of software mm -hmm. called Closest Copy. What does it allow you to do? You subscribe to the service. You say you want to talk about sales. You put in a few words about sales. Mm -hmm. On the other side, it gives you a whole lot of advertising copy. Wow. <clears throat> so it literally gives you as a small business owner, access to what an ad agency that you would have to pay for, it gives you the service gives you that at facility. the click of a button. At wow. a click of a button. So what does it do? It opens up a whole market for SMEs to be able to get involved in that space, whereas traditionally they couldn't afford an agency. Mm. Will it replace a, a, a copywriter? A, a, no, in an agency, absolutely not. But it would allow a huge part of the market to be able to enter the advertising world to be able to market. So technology is an enabler. Another example is for content providers, there's a platform called Genero or Flare Studio. Mm -hmm. On the one end, there's a whole lot of brands that give briefs. And on the other end, there's a whole lot of creative people that uh, 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 subscribe to those briefs. You don't meet anybody. You put your brief online. Oh, it wow. gets judged. You win the award. You win the project. And all of a sudden, a South African company is producing Mars pet food for a client that sits in the UK. In the country, wow. You haven't met the client face to face once. The production's done online, your payment's done online, your, your, I mean, it's all just enabled a full suite of tools for you to be able to produce jobs that are not on your doorstep. And this is so important for entrepreneurs, right? Because I get a lot of questions from viewers asking, how do I compete against the big brands who have big budgets to be able to advertise my product um, in a way that still looks sexy and professional? So what I'm hearing from you is that there are platforms that a small business owner can actually subscribe to, to assist them in this process. Now, let's flip it over a little bit, right? Not from a business point of view, but from a consumer. We are all consumers. We buy bread, milk, everything that we, we own, we purchase, basically, or we buy the ingredients to make, we need to be communicated to, to entice us to go to the store or buy the product. Now, what we see, i.e. the content, is what entices us, or not. Correct. How has technology affected how brands are creating content, or what should they be doing? Um, to get consumers to go to the store and buy. Now, that's a brilliant example. So I suppose their technology has also played such a vital role in what consumers have got access to watch. 
So as brands, do you just want to do what you used to do? And the answer is absolutely not. So you have to be in the space where you engage your consumer. You want to get them interested in what you're selling, what you're providing as a service. And that's, I suppose, the key differentiator. The creativity that the brand or the creators behind what you're going to be putting out mm -hmm. is what's going to make a difference. Right. And TikTokers have done exceptionally well with that. I use that as a reference all the time because here you have literally somebody with a ring light, a phone, and doing something crazy. And within minutes, there are millions of people who've seen that. If a brand latches onto that, literally they get exposure to millions of people and it probably wouldn't have cost them very much. So, so a perfect example, the um, TikTokers have got a, a phone, but behind that they've got a really good idea. Mm -hmm. So even though a brand can be spending millions of rands to create a 30 second ad or a piece of content, it may not even come close to what a TikToker can do at the end of a phone. So technology is an enabler, but does it really get your attention as a consumer on the other side? No. And I think that's that ingredients in the middle is what we call creativity. And you have to be creative in one way or another to be able to get an audience. So it's, there's millions of TikTokers, but not millions of TikTokers have got an audience. It's the ones that have got a really good idea. You know, it, it's interesting that you say that because if you had to monetize something on TikTok that has perhaps not been monetized, I always use the example of things going viral, um, like uh, Gangnam Style, that song, right? If Sai got a dollar for every view that he got before he became Sai, he would be a multi-millionaire. Sadly, he only started earning after the explosion, right? So I think my takeout from what you're saying is that technology exists. It's definitely a part of our everyday lives. It's a vital part of any business. For small businesses, they don't really have to be afraid about investing in huge technology to be able to put out content that will help grow their business. There are platforms available that can make it quite accessible. But most importantly, the thing that still exists since the 80s is the idea that drives the content, right? Yeah. So it's not the technology that drives the content. It's still that big idea that sells product. Absolutely, you know, that big idea, that creative differentiation between what you really do. And, and, and each brand needs to look at what they think their target market's gonna want mm -hmm. to consume. Because choice allows consumers to choose to watch your content or not. Or not. Oh, what a wonderful note to end on. Thank you so much. And so, so, so vital. I, I think it was Dave, Dave, David Ogilvy who said, um, the consumer is not a moron. The consumer is your wife, right? Because I think we overthink things sometimes and we forget the basics. A good idea that is really creative, that will resonate, technology or not, will sell the product. To the viewers, whether you are a small business, an aspiring multinational business, a good idea in terms of creativity is still at the heart of content creation. And you can have the best technology money can buy and still not hit that sweet spot with the consumer and sell product. At the end of the day, creativity in content creation is king. Until next week.